You will see me sitting in a very uncomfortable uh, situation. I do it on purpose because I'm going to explain you on this table of, uh, about the brain. If we draw a horse, this is a hole in the table, it doesn't count, so I'm just pretending it's not there. If you might draw a horse, you will see a body and a tail. This is the tail, with a lot of imagination. Then you see the neck, this part from here to here, and on his neck is the head. Okay, so far pretty good. I will move it a little bit so it might be a little bit easier. This is the brain of each animal that can move, and that's a very important difference. An animal that can move has a back. In this back, and I only actually I only know the Dutch word for it. And the Dutch word for it is ruggenberg. This is the system that walks through the back, through the bones of the back. It's very well protected. We have very a lot of bones who are protecting it, and they um, how do I show it best? They, they they cooperate. And inside, this is all protected by bones, so there is nothing. This is the back of the horse. It's one of the most, it's one of the biggest problems, the back of horses, because many horses are crippled and lame. This part, and also the neck, and yeah, well, there's a knife here, but imagine, yeah, just imagine, it's the horse. Here's the head, here we have the legs, here you have the front legs, here you have the back legs, here you have the belly, and this is still the back. This is a connected on the part that we call the amygdala. It's a Latin name, so we can do use these words internationally. That's the part where the senses come in, that's where the feelings are. So if there's a fly landing on the back of this horse, the horse has a reflex to, to move his skin. And in summertime, when you're working with horses, you would sometimes wish that you also had such a reflex, but we don't. We have to put the flies away, if they are there, if they are there. But this part also tells uh, a horse, uh, when he's walking with his front legs, when he's doing this, uh, and he's walking on his front legs and, and the floor is weak, that part will tell him, don't go any further. And that's because there is a connection with the amygdala and the feelings. Then we have another very important part, and I'm going to take this iron. You won't believe, you don't want to be, I don't want to know anymore what I paid. This was, these are irons which one of my horses had to wear. These irons were almost 250 euros, and that's very, very expensive. Only two. So I want to give them a very, uh, very special meaning so we can all learn from This is the part of feeling. Around the feeling, and that's with all the moving animals, around the feeling there is a part that's the learning part. And that's what we call the neocortex, which is also Latin for the part of the horse. This neocortex makes it possible for animals to learn. Not all animals have to learn a lot because a lot of animals have a very strong instinct and they have a smaller, I don't have a smaller iron, they have a very small neocortex. But most of the animals, the animals which we were able to domesticate, um, have a very well developed neocortex. I actually would like to show you this. Now, two horses at my left drinking and they are so calm and peaceful that it's very nice to see. They do that because their feelings tell them that they are thirsty. So this neocortex, their mind, their brain tells them 
if you are thirsty, you have to walk to the water. And since they know where the water is, they come here to drink. Water and food are, of course, very important for humans, for animals and humans to, to live. Without water, you can't live. Still, nature built all animals who are living in the field, normally living in the field, build them like they don't need water every time. So they can drink a lot, take it, and their body will spread the water where it's necessary. If something happens, something bad happens, a horse falls, for instance, he's rearing and the rider says, I'm going to turn him, and put him on his back, and those things happen. And a horse falls and he gets damaged here. That means that his backside from here on is totally lame. He cannot walk anymore. For horses, it means death. For humans, we have these chairs that we can still live on because the front part is all good. Depending on where the accident happens, and in Dutch we call it a dwarse lazy, and I don't know the English word for it, but people will understand what I mean. If we go back to the horses, feelings, and the neocortex, which is teaching you what to do and how to respond on your feelings. Animals with a small neocortex cannot respond very, they cannot think uh, smart, they are not uh, what we call intelligent. They respond most of the time from out of this part. If I take it away, and I'm, if you uh, use your imagination please, small neocortex, they respond like animals, and many animals do, like the, the swallow for instance, uh, it's a bird who comes here in, in the Netherlands, who, who builds his nests in, in summertime, eats, raises the children, and then after a while, um, at the end of September, October, he flies away and warms himself in another country. There is a chicken coming anyway. Chickens also, they don't, they have a very small neocortex, they are very basic, they are very basic animals. People who have chicken at their places will know that they are very, very basic. Horses, orcas, dolphins, people, <laughs> we have a big, big neocortex. So that means that we can learn a lot. And this is actually a very easy way to understand the brain of animals.